In my previous video, I unboxed and gave you a hands-on look at the hi R2 digital audio player. At $100, US could this be the best bang for the buck audio player for all users, even for non-audiophiles like me, or you should look somewhere else? Well, we'll find out in this video. My name is James from Tech MNO. Buckle up, this is the hi R2 review. Before we begin, to be transparent with you in this review, I personally bought this product for personal use and all of my assessments and opinions are mine, and it wasn't altered in any way or being influenced by the manufacturer or the seller. Now let's get into it on our review. The design of the hi R2 looks like a classic iPod Shuffle and Nano 6th generation but on steroids. The zinc alloy side chassis is really premium and it's cool to the touch, while the audio player's front and back are made from glass. Even though the chassis is great, the glossy and shiny finish is a complete fingerprint magnet which turns me off and most importantly, it's quite easy to have scratches on it especially on the bottom portion where the USB-C port, the 3.5mm headphone jack, and the micro SD card slot houses. One commenter from my unboxing video also asked me if my unit's button controls are flimsy and had some rotting issues. And I will confirm now that my hi R2 has that also. I am quite scared that the buttons will fall off in the near future, but I hope it will not happen soon. I wish they will fix this in the later batches. The screen of the hi R2 is, let's say, good, but I hope it could be better. The screen is small for its square size, resulting in a chunky top and bottom bezels. The resolution is good too with vibrant colors, but I do hope the pixels per inch is more than 480 by 360 pixels. But it's a cheap audio player, so it's an exemption for me here. But one thing is bothering me all the time, and that is the touch responsiveness. Sometimes it can't read my finger if it's an angled or it's not a hard press. But I don't know if this is a major flaw of the device or is it because the screen protector that's pre-installed on the device by the way is a cheap material and it's also an easy scratch magnet. I want to remove the screen protector but I can't find a replacement online so customizing it is the only option right now. The hi 2 software is a Linux-based operating system called hi OS that's been used by their other previous models. However, if you have that, the user experience is quite different since the size of it like the R3 isn't the same as the R2. The R2's user interface though is colorful and the app sizes are big enough to see. Speaking of colorful, you can customize the overall color theme of the R2 to your heart's content. There's 5 pre-made colors on top and a color picker and intensity strip at the bottom with a high logo at the center to preview if you got the perfect color for you. The firmware version I have in this review for the hi R2 is on version 1.1. But like other softwares that is available in the market, hi OS is not polished enough and there are some issues and minor problems. For instance, on importing files using Wi-Fi transfer, the default language there is in Chinese even though I already set the device in English. So I try to use Google Translate to check if the button I will press is correct. Also, even though I understand the decision of hi to use a virtual T9 keyboard for entering the Wi-Fi password, it's quite unintuitive and messy. I wish they will fix it in a later update. Before we move on, if you enjoyed this video, I appreciate if you click that subscribe button and hit that bell icon to get notified when there's a brand new video, including my announcement for my Road to 1K subscriber giveaway which is happening real soon. If you want to join, click the link in the description or in the card right now. The hi R2 has a lot of options on how you listen and consume music. First, aside from the usual 3.5mm headphone jack that's available here, you can also use your Bluetooth headphones and speakers to this device. So when you're jogging outside for example, you can leave your phone at home and listen to your music wirelessly. You can also use this device as a Bluetooth transmitter or receiver for any compatible devices like smartphones, laptops, and tablets to name a few. 
When I test this on my Redmi Note 9 Pro, it goes on LDAC codec for a high resolution audio experience. While on my iPad Mini 5, it only goes to SBC codec at max. Other available codecs are UAT, AppX, and AAC. The Hi BR2 does not have onboard storage, but thankfully it has a micro SD card slot that can read up to 2 terabytes of storage. Amount of the songs inside will depend on the files you will transfer. It also has a dual microphone setup to record anything directly on the Hi BR2. And this is a sample audio recording. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. You can choose to transfer music files through USB transfer or via Wi-Fi thanks to its 2.4 and 5GHz fan support right alongside manual transfer on the card itself if we have a card reader. But a quick reminder that USB transfer on Android phones will not work here and if you are a type of person who will cycle the types of file transfer every time, files via import transfer mode is unavailable to read outside the player due to some software restrictions on copyright. As I stated in my hands-on video, I am not an audiophile or an audio enthusiast so there are some of the audiophiles and codecs that I will not discuss here in this review. But I did my very best to give justice and give you honest feedback on this segment. All of the songs I tested in this review will also be in the description below for your reference. In my almost 3 weeks of using this device, I really enjoyed listening to my favorite music in any type of audio output. Pop, country, electronic, and acoustic songs as an example are great in this high BR2 audio player. Bass is good, vocal and instrument separation is great and true to life, while the clarity is good too. But I noticed that the treble is quite okay for my taste and not good enough. And as a non-audiophile user, I really don't know the difference between the typical music files I knew like MP3, AAC, and M4A to the high resolution music aside from the FLAC files like MQA, DSD, OGG, and WAV to name a few. Fortunately, my friend who has a collection of high resolution audio files shares some songs to check out and also listen to Spotify with different sets of audio quality settings and try to listen to one song in different file formats and bandwidth. And boy oh boy, it's a wild ride. The high resolution tracks are clean and I had a great experience with it, like hearing each instrument and every little detail the artist intended to do on their track, especially in 24-bit FLAC files in 44 to 192 kHz. I also had a great sound experience on MQA and DSD files, but there's one thing I didn't understand. MP3 files in 320 kbps and FLAC files in 16-bit had the same sound profile and signature as my own testing which is quite weird. The LED notification on the power button will determine what music format is playing. Blue is for the typical music files plus a FLAC 16-bit and 24-bit below 96kHz. It will turn green when MQA and other FLAC files are on the track right now and it turn white if it's TSD. Overall, with its sheer level of great sound quality in this small device, I can see and understand now why some people are investing and spending hundreds or even thousands of dollars for a pair of high-quality, high-resolution headphones and Hi BR2 delivers a great music experience without breaking the bank. The Hi BR2 has a 1000 mAh battery in a compact audio player that has a dedicated digital to analog converter that has 17 MW output power and has 32 ohms on each channel. Sadly, the battery life did not hit Hi B's claim at 15 hours. With a 3.5mm headphone jack output, I can only squeeze out at least 12 to 13 hours of battery life on a single charge, which is not bad either. When in a mixture of all outputs, I can only manage at least 12 hours. But disclaimer, battery life will depend based on the music files you use. Fortunately though, the USB-C port has a 5W max charging capacity and it can go from dead battery to full in only 17 minutes. Now that I have already discussed and analyzed the Hi BR2, it now comes to our final question. Is the Hi BR2 worth buying? If you are a type of person that wants to separate your favorite songs to your daily driver phone and don't want to be bombarded by any social media apps and notifications without buying a second phone and escape the real world through the magic of music, at $99, US the Hi BR2 is your easy boarding pass ticket to have a music experience that you'll never felt before even if you're not an audiophile user. Or if you're an audiophile but can't afford to buy the best and well-known high-risk digital audio players in the market right now, this is a great bang for the buck option for you. But with high B sacrificial and questionable choices like the small and low pixel screen, 
a glossy alloy chassis that's a fingerprint magnet, touchscreen problems, and not so polished software, this can hurt your purchase decision and look somewhere else. However, the Hi-B R2 with its sea of music file support, a faster Wi-Fi bandwidth, bi-directional connectivity features, and tons of options you can do in a pocketable form factor, that's unimaginable and unbelievable. And the price tag of 99 US dollars as the cherry on top, this is for sure 100% buy in my book and a great recommendation to anyone. If you want to watch more reviews that you need to know, you can see it here on the screen right now. Subscribe to the channel and follow my social media accounts at TechMNO. My name is James, thanks for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.